Hi everyone, thanks for joining us and welcome back to the channel. Today we are joined by a wonderful peer, Betty, um, and we're going to be talking with them today about um, discarding. So first I want to give them an opportunity to kind of introduce themselves. Hi, my name's Betty and uh, I am wearing a hat and a pair of sunglasses and I'm, I've got this exotic background of this beach, which is where I'd really like to be right now. <laughs> and I'm, I'm kind of in a disguising myself a little bit. And the reason for that is because um, there is still a lot of discrimination and stigma that goes along with hoarding disorder. And I don't want to face that discrimination the next time I go looking for a rental unit to rent. So that's why I've got this sort of pseudo dis disguise. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for bringing that up. Of course, privacy is so important. And I think um, we're just so lucky to have your presence here today um, in your disguise, which is so beautiful, by the way. Um, and to really acknowledge that there still is this stigma. And I think that that's also part of why we're wanting to have this conversation today. We're going to be talking kind of about some of your own experiences with hoarding and cluttering related challenges to raise awareness and to really see that we're real people here um, and to kind of hopefully reduce some of that stigma while still acknowledging that it's very much a part of our lives. Um, so kind of going to begin with the first question of what are some examples of why it's hard for you to let things go? Well, um, first of all, they've done a lot of brain scans on people who have collecting behaviors and have found that there are actual differences in the brain of someone who has collecting behaviors versus, versus someone who does not. And um, I have done cognitive studies. Uh, they have done cognitive studies on my brain. And sure enough, I have been impacted with higher executive functioning, particularly in the area of categorization, decision making, perfectionism, um, and uh, a few other items like that memory. So uh, yes, I have some issues with my, the way my brain processes information. I totally believe that that's the case and there, as researchers are continuing to take a look at that. So that's, that would be, I would say, number one. 57% uh, of people who have collecting behaviors also have a first degree relative who has collecting behaviors and 85% have a second degree relative who has collecting behaviors. And I have lots and lots of relatives who have collecting behaviors, including uh, my father. So that's, uh, that's me. I, I came by it honestly, and it doesn't really have anything to do with the environment. It has to, to, to do with what, how my brain works. Uh, the next reason why I think that I have it is because um, they've done studies to indicate recently that attachment disorder is common with people who have collecting behaviors, that for whatever reason, uh, it was people who have collecting behaviors have difficulty connecting, uh, attaching to the, their family of origin, the adults who are raising them. It's sort of like when a child an, uh, is in a developmental stage where they attach to a blanket, they're a little blanky when they're growing up uh, as a way of comforting themselves. Well, I, as someone who has collecting behaviors, I attached to bl a blankie and that that blankie has, has gone with me my whole life because people will, can, disappoint me, can leave me, can hurt me, but my objects will never leave me or hurt me or disappoint me until I'm ready for them to leave me. This, uh, my cell phone, my cell phone will never do anything to me to hurt me and will never leave until I let it, I let it go. And if it breaks down, oh, that's a catastrophe, but <laughs> I still have more control. It's not going to leave on its own accord. Um, and thirdly, 
um, people who have collective behaviors, myself included, often 50% of the time, 49% of the time, come from a background where there's trauma, some kind of trauma or loss or some kind of grief. And I've had a lot of trauma in my life. Now that is, doesn't, that is not an excuse for my collecting behaviors because there's lots of people who have trauma who do not develop uh, collecting behaviors. It's just that that's what I turn to as well as other things. So those, those I would say would, are the three biggest driving factors. Yeah, and thank you so much for sharing that with us, kind of naming both your personal experience and also some of the research behind it and kind of research that's developing, like we're seeing kind of the neurological reasons. Um, sometimes we experience these difficulties, also hereditary, seeing both modeling and kind of also families of origin and this kind of emerging research on attachment, right? And that makes so much sense of um, you know, this, this isn't our fault that this is happening. And it makes a lot of sense um, why we would kind of have these experiences um, and find even kind of comfort in our objects too. Um, kind of touching on objects, what are some examples of things that are more challenging to let go of for you? Uh, thanks, Ray. I, I did want to follow up with something that you just said, which is, <laughs> It may not be my fault that I have this. I honestly believe that it's a disorder, just like if I had schizophrenia, it's not my fault that I have schizophrenia, but it is my responsibility to utilize as many tools as possible so that I can improve my situation. So if I had schizophrenia and I was uh, hallucinating and I had I, I had the option of taking medication that would mitigate those hallucinations. And you, even though the, med, the medication may have some drawbacks, I, I, I would, you know, I, I would probably be encouraged to be medication compliant and um, go to therapy and things like that. So I too, as somebody who has hoarding disorder, uh, it's, it's up to me to pick up the, the set the the tools that are available to me and there's many tools available um, so in in terms of what types of objects I struggle with um, in my case I struggle with objects that have sentimental value um, and I tend to be a perfectionist so it's like I have to find the perfect way to discard of the object but if I spent all the time uh, to, to let go of the object in the perfect way so that the perfect person would, would be able to enjoy this object. It would take two or three lifetimes. So that's, I have to let go of my perfectionism in order to get rid of the objects. Um, uh, I, I have, uh, paperwork is a huge uh, item that's, that I struggle with because of it's I struggle with decision making. I want to make sure that I don't miss out on any important information. Um, fear, fear that I'm going to make a mistake. All of those things are, are big. Uh, my husband died in a very, very tragic way. And it's been challenging for me to let go of his objects. Um, I'm making headway though. <laughs> yes, I am. Woo -hoo. Um, so all of those things I, 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 I struggle with. And I've also, um, to a lesser degree, I have this hyper sense of responsibility to the object that, uh, I want to be a good environmentalist and make sure that it, uh, we get the last itty bitty, tiny, itsy bitsy, tiny bit of use out of the object before it goes into landfill but i've definitely got much much better at that because i no longer want to live in a landfill i don't want to live in a recycling bin i don't want to live in a storage unit or a thrift store i want to purge 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 so all of that is really good thank you yeah kind of sharing about like sentimental value and also seems like 
kind of things you value in life, like being an environmentalist and that's what kind of is an identity and a value. And so that really kind of contributes, it sounds like, to yeah, why there may be some difficulties letting things go. And at the same time, it, it sounds like there's been this big shift for you of things that might have been difficult to let go of in the past or are still difficult now that you're still able to let go. So I was wondering if you can maybe talk a little bit to kind of that shift within yourself. How did that happen? Well, let's take about talk about the environmentalism first. Um, so yes, I have really purged my home. I've gotten uh, rid of the equivalent of 817 bankers boxes worth of stuff. Now I'm sitting in a chair right now and if I were to chop up that chair and it did tiny, tiny sections, how many bankers boxes would it fill? This particular chair, it would be about two, two and a half bankers boxes. So I've gotten rid of the equivalent of 817 bankers boxes. And now I've got a long way to go. So I am, uh, but initially just starting off, it was very hard, the, the go going was slow, but the more I do it, the better, the, the easier it gets. So initially I wanted to, um, I wanted to make sure that, uh, I, I, a tool that I did is that I, um, I was able to whatever I didn't want, I would I would discard into like the goodwill pile, and I'd let the goodwill people figure out if it was actually something that had any kind of value left in it, or if it needed to be recycled or trashed. Um, so I've made a lot of progress that way. Uh, the only th I've made progress in probably every area. Uh, the I still have. Uh, ways to go um, again with paperwork. That's still my one of my slowest areas. Thank you. Yeah, and it seems like, yeah, this kind of sorting things of like donation and goodwill and almost hearing like resourcing of drawing in people to kind of help make those distinguish or kind of distinguish between is this recycle? Is this um, worthy of reselling that kind of almost like letting go of that responsibility a little bit. Absolutely. And it's really one thing that's really helped me is to kind of cast my bread upon the waters and that all this stuff that was, in, that was in my home, it's just sitting there and it, 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 it's so much better if I can just let go of it and somebody else, somebody else can, enjoy it and put it to good use instead of it just sitting there and um i i i'm not particularly interested in selling things at this point i mean a little bit but mostly i just want to give it away and get rid of it that was slowed down significantly during the pandemic and still is because a lot of donation centers have uh, closed their doors or they're being really particular about what they what they bring in because of the pandemic um but yeah uh, i i am so happy for those donation centers thank you yeah i definitely appreciate you sharing that and i know we've kind of been talking about like more specific kind of items and things um, but we also know that difficulty discarding isn't always just about a particular item this difficulty can also come about just by it's hard to start the process of it like for example, some people may delay sorting a task. And I was wondering if this has been your experience and can you share a little bit more about kind of the difficulties behind getting started? I think procrastination or sloth or <laughs> is a huge component of collecting behaviors, at least for myself and for many other people that I know. And uh, a large part of that is it, the fear, the fear of decluttering. Um, as with, I mean, it, it, there's so much discomfort in doing it. It's, it's like you, I'd rather not do it at all. But the more I avoid doing it, the bigger the problem becomes. So I've discovered that the only way out is through and that, um, that, uh, that uh, anticipation is worse than realization. That, oh my gosh, it's gonna be awful, it's gonna be awful, it's gonna be awful. The more time I spend doing that, 
and, and avoiding the, the task, the worse it becomes. And if I just do the task, it's so much, so much easier. Now, um, uh, I'm going to share a little bit later about community because uh, having community, being with other people who experience this and we can cheer each other on as with what Dr. Chow would say would be compassion buddies or clutter buddies, that's another phrase for it, is that uh, teaming up forces and just having non-judgmental mutual support uh, for doing this is a great way to push through the procrastination. Uh, having a, an accountability partner, I don't know why it works exactly, but if Ray, I were to uh, t text you and say, okay, uh, on Sunday, I'm going to spend two hours doing my laundry. Somehow just committing that to you enables me to actually get it done. Whereas if I don't communicate that to you, then I'm less likely to do it. But the fact that I've committed to you that I'm going to do it, I don't, I really don't know how exactly it works, but it, it, it does work. And so, um, and I have, I have, um, I have clutter buddies, compassion buddies do, for all kinds of different things. Um, I have one that I have, I have ones who are not, who don't have clutter issues themselves. I have this one friend who we report back to each other what we're doing with our health. You know, hey, have you made that doctor's appointment yet? Or uh, I've heard of people who have uh, compassion partners for going to bed on time, you know? No, I want to stay up just a little longer. Okay, no, I told my 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 bedtime um, uh, partner that I would, my bedtime clutter buddy that I'm going to go to bed at a certain time. There, there's just something magical about it. So that really, really helps with the procrastination. Yeah, there is something so powerful. It seems like in kind of not only just being in community with people, but also kind of like um, feeling this accountability, feeling this non-judgment of uh, you can you could text them whether your buddy is specifically for, um, yeah, maybe more chore related things or health related things or bedtime routines that kind of having that like, yeah, just such like this kind of wraparound support has been really kind of instrumental in kind of moving, moving towards the stuckness of getting started because that can be so difficult and so if we have somebody there along with us how awesome mm -hmm. and i'm also curious what's one thing you would say to people who don't really understand this difficulty like maybe loved ones of people experiencing collecting related challenges um well let's see there are you know some people it's like an addiction Clutter issues is basically an addiction. There's there's two, com three components to it, I guess. There's um, acquiring, bringing the objects in, and about 80% of people who have clutter issues have, have a compulsion to bring things in. It's sort of like retail therapy. Ooh, score, I got this new thing, yahoo. And it doesn't even have to be something that you buy at the store. It could be something from the street or uh, it could be free things at, uh, that somebody gives you. Like if you go to a convention and they hand out those pieces, those um, leaflets, it could be. Um, so there's active acquisition, which I consciously make the decision to bring in more objects. And that fulfills kind of a, a need or a desire. And uh, then there's passive acquisition, which is when uh, pr uh, packaging from, uh, from products or the junk mail, or if maybe somebody gives me a gift or I inherit something, those are all passive uh, acquisition. And then there's avoidance, where I'm avoiding dealing with the clutter. So I, I acquire, I acquire, and then things stack up. 
And so I avoid dealing with the stuff. And then the third element is that I just don't have a good sense of, of organization. So when you get all three of those things combined, it's, it's a problem. Um, and some people drink too much. Uh, some people smoke. Some people uh, are not as good to their kids as they could be. Some people um, are addicted to exercise. Boy, that would be a nice addiction. Um, some people are workaholics and don't spend as, as, mu as much time with their family as they could. Um, some people are gamblers and the list goes on and on and on. And um, some people are religious fanatics where they take their relationship with their higher power to an extreme where it, it might even it, even that could, could turn out to be something that's not healthy um anything that a person does that is not in balance it could be could be some you know could, could be an issue so I, I, it would be nice if family or friends or people who don't understand collective behaviors had some compassion for people who have this issue, because for the most part, um, it's it's an addiction. It's filling up a hole, and it's a brain chemistry, and it's not something that people really chose, and it brings so much suffering. So um, try to. If somebody loves someone who has collecting behaviors, try try to look at your own behavior and see if you can relate in any way about something that you're doing that you don't like either. And just from that, you know, forgive yourself that you have that behavior and try to apply some forgiveness towards your loved one because that goes a long, long way. It's a mental health issue. It's not something that the, that the, your loved one shows. That would be my comment. Mm, yeah, that was so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Of, sounds like both asking for kind of deeper understanding into the reasons behind people experience these challenges, that it wasn't chosen, and also asking for loved ones to kind of reflect on their own experiences and kind of share in this the human experience of what it means to have challenges, whether that looks like collecting related challenges or something else. Mm -hmm. And kind of somewhat along a similar line, what is one thing you would say to people who are experiencing difficulty letting things go? Um, well, I would say try to educate yourself. There are, there's a lot to know about this. There's a lot. Uh, there's, there is help available, so look look online, do some research. Dr. Chow and, and her colleague Susie Dubois are currently doing a, uh, a study, and it's a really fabulous thing what they're doing, and if you can at all uh, get yourself involved with that, but not everybody is able to do that. Uh, they don't meet the criteria for the study. They don't live in California, or et cetera. But try to build community. Community, I think, is the biggest thing. Uh, try to find other people who have this issue so that you feel comfortable. Um, let me rephrase that. I, community has been fabulous, and that that has helped me just so, so much. Uh, another thing that I would say is, you know, the horse has left the barn. The money that I spent on all this junkola is already gone. <laughs> it's not coming down back. And to just be okay with the fact that I've spent all this money and to not spend good money after bad money, money meaning, you know, if, if I'm storing all, if I have a storage unit, to let go, get, get go through the storage unit and get rid of as much of that as I can because now I'm just storing stuff that I'll probably never use. Uh, and uh, I actually did store, I had a storage unit and I got rid of it and uh, 
most of it I got rid of. Um, and I can't imagine how much I spent on that. Um, so, and to put it as a high, high priority because um, it's got to be at, at very close to the top of my priority list. Obviously my health and has to come first ultimately, but this is really part of my mental health to let go of these objects because I, now that I am decluttering, uh, I'm saving so much time, energy, effort, and money by the decluttering process. So it's absolutely, absolutely been worth it. Um, and uh, I had I had some other thoughts about this, but it's and to forgive myself, forgive myself that that I have this thing, and but 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 to just keep going, not to let it. Oh well, I have a disorder, and that's just the way it is. No, I have a disorder. If I if I had um, if I had if I had cancer. Uh, let me rephrase that. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's say I had uh, broken my leg, and the uh, the doctor uh, put it in a uh, put it in a cast, and now it's time for me to do physical therapy in order for me to regain range of motion. Uh, I I need to do the physical therapy. Yes, it's going to hurt. Yes, it's going to feel uncomfortable. But it's up to me to do the physical therapy. And ultimately, nobody can do that for me. People can help guide me. People can, you know, the physical therapist can teach me how to do the exercises and support me and cheer me on. But ultimately, I'm the one that's going to have to do it. And if I don't do it, I'm the one that's going to suffer. So I really have to look at it that it's in my self-interest to declutter. And today, uh, you know, my house is in really good shape and I regularly entertain. I am no longer afraid that I'm going to get evicted. Uh, yay, the landlord can knock on my door any day of the week and come in and I'm not afraid that I'm going to that that he's going to bounce me out of this unit and that I am a good tenant today. And that makes me feel really, really fantastic. Um, again, there are tons and tons of resources available for this, regardless of what your situation is. So please do look on uh, the internet and search under hoarding or clutter, uh, and you'll find different things. And that's... Uh, that's, I guess, what I'd all. Oh, the final thing I'd like to say is that um, there is hope. Change is possible. I know a lot of people who are in recovery whose lives are completely different than when they started out, and that and that includes me. So, don't give up. Don't give up. Keep up the fight. And. Uh, thank you. And thank you so much. Yeah, it sounds like really right that, um, you know, we're kind of on our own journeys, but there is community here to support. And as we're experiencing difficulties with discarding or acquiring or anything else kind of related to um, this disorder, uh, this kind of lived experience. Um, and like you said, um, there is hope um and you're not alone um so i so appreciate you kind of sharing your story and your experience with us um, and we're just so grateful to you for being here as we kind of wrap up i want to close by asking you if there's any last thing you'd like to share with us um i think that's it uh, yeah don't give up don't give up keep up the fight and that um well i, I one other thing is that many of us uh, believe that we are in the right. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to admit that there might be something wrong with us. And when, it, you know, like I could defend my right to hang on to these objects. But 
an important thing is to surrender the idea that, oops, I could be in the wrong. Oops, maybe other people are telling me the truth that according to standards that I don't necessarily understand, I have too much stuff. And like just trusting and having an open mind that that I can possibly live without some of the stuff that I have. You know, because to me, when I first started, it was like, well, I don't have a problem. Other people have a problem thinking that I have too much stuff. That's not that's not the case. I did have too much stuff. So trying to have an open mind about that because uh, my housing is more important than my stuff people and relationships are more important than my lifeless inanimate objects my husband and i were arguing bitterly and that's about our stuff and that's what led me into trying to declutter uh, because he was more important than my stuff. And um, so that's that's just an important thing to keep in mind. It, and that back to the, what I said earlier about the attachment disorder, uh, you know, my, my, my cell phone's gonna stay with me forever, but you, uh, you may not like me and you may say something hurtful to me but you're still more important. People and relationships are still more important than my stuff. And it's okay to trust that. It's okay to trust people. It, it really is. And um, let's see, I, I'm happy to report that I am now in a place where I would rather need an object and not have it than have an object and not need it. I'm going to say that again. I'm now at a place where I would rather need an object and not have it than have an object and not need it. And I am so, so fortunate that I have done, you know, a lot. Of, I've gotten a lot of help from a lot of different communities um, and uh, and that things are better. Thank you. Yes, and thank you. We're so honored to hear you and hear your story and really hearing the name that for you, um, your priorities really came down to the people in your life and also this new community of people that you found, um, folks who identify as collectors, folks who maybe identify as having um, clutter or hoarding related challenges that that's been um, yeah that's been a really big part in your journey um, and really want to encourage the folks who are either listening um, and identify with having these experiences or folks who are loved ones or um, compassionate caring people who also want to be a part of this community we really invite you to um, kind of look more at our links um, in the description below. Um, we currently serve folks all across California, and we're also happy to help connect people who are maybe outside of our state to resources. Because um, as Betty said, there are resources for you and we wanna be here for you too. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in and thank you, Betty. Uh, thank you so very much. Bye. Happy decluttering, everyone. <laughs>